Japan is one of the most seismically active regions on our planet, and it boasts some of the largest and most explosive volcanoes as a result of this. And with every century that passes, one can expect the occurrence of a number of devastatingly large earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and equally as destructive tsunamis to take place. But even though it's a land forged by fire, it's one of the most picturesque places on our planet. That is, until one of the large volcanoes here decide to roar to life. And roar to life is a nice way of putting it, because some 30,000 years ago, an eruption occurred here at a truly terrifying scale, in the southernmost part of the main island, which absolutely scorched and incinerated any life living near to it, along with burying it in thick volcanic sediments, following the descent of numerous major pyroclastic flows, which affected areas both near and far from the main eruptive vents, along with it propelling a vast ash plume high up into the stratosphere, creating major ash falls in the process, and inducing an inevitable volcanic winter, as the sun slowly got blocked from the solar reflecting aerosols that were released by the volcanic eruption, as they went on to form a sort of blanket, as they spread out across the stratosphere of our planet, stifling the ability for the sun's rays to penetrate through to the surface, dropping temperatures and producing inhospitable conditions for life on Earth as a result. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the dreadfully violent eruption that was released by Japan's Ira Caldera, and discuss the stratovolcano that took its place following the supervolcanic eruption that occurred here almost 30,000 years ago. The Ira Caldera is, unsurprisingly, related to the complex tectonic collisions that are taking place beneath Japan, which are responsible for its formation to begin with. Japan is situated on something known as a volcanic arc, and clearly this volcanic arc is still very much alive. And that's why the entire landmass of this gorgeous country is more or less similar in its biomes to what one would witness in Indonesia, in that it's dominated by mountainous terrain that consists of numerous volcanoes of varying sizes from small to impressively large and beyond. And in general, these volcanoes have the potential to release truly catastrophic explosive volcanic eruptions, some of which, as previously mentioned, have consequences that are far-reaching enough to affect life on the entire planet by altering the temperature and plunging it into a volcanic winter. And much like I mentioned in the video that we released recently, where we went in depth into how and why supervolcanoes form, and what conditions are necessary for them to do so, link in the description, this supervolcano is a subduction-related one that exists in an area of depressed land that's rifting apart, known as a graben. And this graben, in particular, is known as the Kagoshima graben. Since the land is stretching apart and the crust is thinning out as a result, magma is more readily able to rise up through the faults and fractures that have been created within the rocks. Supervolcanoes always exist in this part of the volcanic arc, and this explains the location of the Ira Caldera to a T. But the Ira is interesting in that it's sharing a magma chamber with many of the volcanoes that make up the Kirishima volcanic group to its north, and indeed the lava has been matched and is chemically identical to Ira, proving the fact that the same magma chamber is fueling both of these areas, which is a great example of just how much magma is upwelling from deep within the earth beneath Japan, as a byproduct of the enormous tectonic events that it's undergoing. And to this day, that very same magma chamber is fueling the stratovolcano known as Sakurajima, which was constructed a few thousand years following the super eruption that formed the Ira Caldera. It started forming around 27,000 years ago, and has taken over since then as the main volcanic vent. Because of the faulting that's occurred here, owed to the Horst and Graben sequences that dominate the land, the caldera is more rectangular in its shape than circular. When it was first formed, this caldera was 17 by 23 kilometers, or 11 by 14 miles. As for the super eruption, it kicked off at a Plinian scale, and that scale is the same as the one that was witnessed during the 79 AD eruption of Mount Vesuvius, which took out the cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum, among other Roman settlements. So when this eruption kicked off, it did so by the release of a pumice layer called the Osumi Pumice Fall and things would only ramp up in intensity as this was followed by the Sumaya pyroclastic flow. After this, many more pyroclastic flows and tephra falls would be released, and the largest of these explosions released 800 cubic kilometers or 190 cubic miles of ignimbrite in a single pyroclastic flow, called the Ito-Ignimbrite layer, 
which was a layer that would go on to flow well beyond the confines of the then basin-like feature that preceded the Ira Caldera. With the eruption releasing flow deposits that are up to 160 metres or 520 feet thick. On top of this, an additional 300 cubic kilometres or 72 cubic miles would be released in the form of tephra, meaning anything else that was released by the volcanic vent, on top of the aforementioned ignimbrite layers, whether that be in the form of an ashfall or other, and the ashfall itself fell over the whole island of Kyushu, burying it in a layer 32 centimetres or 13 inches thick, and it also covered much of Japan in a layer 4 centimetres or 1.6 inches thick too. Interestingly enough, the depth of study that's been conducted on this volcano is so pronounced that we know what the actual trigger was that ultimately set the wheels of this supervolcanic eruption into motion. It began when a huge amount of mafic magma suddenly injected into the massive body of rhyolitic magma that existed en masse in the batholith sized magma chamber that fuels Ira. Mafic magma is a byproduct of subduction related processes, and it's essentially magma that rise up from the mantle after water, out of all things, gets introduced deep within the earth, which is the necessary catalyst to lower the melting temperature of the surrounding rock that makes up the somewhat solid but also somewhat plastic rocks that line the mantle of our planet, which turn into mafic magma when fully molten. Mafic, simply put, means it's high in iron and magnesium, but fairly low in silica. So it's a hot, fast-flowing, low-viscosity magma that can't really trap in pressure-increasing gases because of its runny consistency. Rhyolite, on the other hand, is a cold, slow-moving, high-viscosity magma that traps in pressure-increasing gases because of its thick viscosity, and it goes boom as a result. So when this injection of mafic magma occurred, it destabilised the stored rhyolitic magma within the huge magma chamber, which had been accumulating for god knows how many thousands of years, and this initial stage of the eruption was what was primarily responsible for producing the initial Asumi pumice fall, which kicked the eruption off, and it probably spurred the explosive volcanic event that preceded it as a result of the earth being weakened enough for the bulk of the rhyolite to take over and to really show the mafic magma what a real eruption looks like. When we look at the surrounding land near to this caldera, it's evident that this wasn't an isolated incident to have occurred here, and older pyroclastic flows that predate the formation of the Ira caldera have been found here. After this eruption, the earth would have entered a volcanic winter, due to the aerosols released by the volcano, which penetrated the stratosphere of the planet in the form of an ash plume only for it to be carried to every corner of it by the global trade winds, where it would spread out as a thin blanket of sorts blocking and reflecting any solar radiation from reaching the surface, along with absorbing terrestrial radiation in the process, creating a double whammy as it absorbs heat from the earth while simultaneously blocking and deflecting UV rays, which plunges the temperature of the planet and creates conditions that are inhospitable enough to make starvation a new temporary norm for the many creatures that inhabit our planet, us included. Following this, the present-day stratovolcano known as Sakurajima began its construction, and it's taken the place of the Ira Caldera. One very interesting side note worth mentioning before we wrap up, it appears that this graben extends south past the Ira Caldera, towards the explosive undersea volcanoes that produce the giant Kikkei Caldera and the Ada South and Ada North Calderas. The tectonics here are some of the most complicated on our planet, because the Okinawa Plate is colliding with the Amur Plate, whilst the Pacific Plate subducts underneath both of these, making studying this area a total mindfuck. In my opinion, Japan is one of those places where there is a highlight of the yin and yang philosophical concept, in that on one hand we have unbelievable beauty, and on the other, terrible destruction, and the underlying volcanism and the associated tectonic forces that are driving it are ultimately responsible for producing both. Thanks for watching.